two minutes over. <laughs> oh shit, shit. Okay, I just we record. Were... Here we go. Yeah. All right. More racism from Hunter. <laughs> okay. Wow. Welcome to part two of Installation Zero Zero. I forgot to say the title of this adventure. Anyway, time skip. It's been about four hours. Zapata, you eventually got bored and wandered off to do something else. I don't know what yet, but still. And uh, yeah, just, just, just eventually got sick and tired of hearing everyone yell at each other and just turned around and walked off. It's just like, y'all aren't interesting anymore. I'm gonna, find, I'm gonna find something else. And uh, Reiko, uh, you spent about forty-five <gasps> minutes uh, rooting around your personal quarters for. Anything resembling a multi tool, yeah. uh, and you found nothing, so you just rejoined the group. And uh, Arsharam, you uh, are meditating on the hangar bay floor. <laughs> Focus your mind, make victory an inevitability of the future. I hit him in the back of the head. No, <laughs> please, for the love that. All I, that stands upon fate. Don't hit him as much as I would like to, too. We are heading to an important place. Fucking Alf is just holding back Hunter, trying to stop him from hitting this prelate. <laughs> mm. Just no, no, no. Kill pill! In any case, right. You've been uh, Reiko, Hunter, Alf, uh, Mike. And Kevin, you've been standing where you were, in your empty little corner of the hangar bay. Uh, at least 100 meters away, there's activity going on. There's dropships and fighter craft and tanks and bloody... What looks to be a bunch of buildings to you, Mike. Uh, but... Nobody's really approached any of you. And it is as you feel a hum rumble through the ship that you look off into the distance at the far, far end of the hangar bay out into what could be space. And all of you realize hey, uh, the ship's moving. It wasn't before, but it's moving now. And all of you here... Well, actually. Reiko, Arsharam, and Zapota, you were all here, in your helmets, a message over the ship com saying, Transit to the Ark in progress, awaiting clip space. Entering the portal. Okay, do me a favor. Hmm? Uh, rejoin the voice chat. Yeah, your mic's kind of going like it sounds like you're going far away, and then you're getting back close, and you're far away again. Sounds like you're under a blanket. Hang on a minute. The tone yeah. would be muffled, I believe. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Yep, better. There you All go. good. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Back onto it. <clears throat> So, it's been a few hours, a few of you have gone off to do your own thing, and you're just sort of sitting around waiting for something to happen when the ship starts to move. And those of you who are feed into the battle net are told, slip space transit in progress. And uh, if you're looking to the far end of the hangar bay, out the quote-unquote window, although it's damn near 500 metres wide, so it's, it's not much of a window, uh, you see a bright, bright light, and then total darkness. And you realise that the ship has indeed gone into slip space. And a figure approaches you. Mike, Alf, Hunter, Kevin and Reiko and Arsharam, if he's still nearby, sitting on the floor. He wouldn't have moved. Um, 
I'm assuming this is what this is a superior of some degree. Hang on, sorry for that. Pause there. So, a figure approaches <coughs> and Arsharam, you would know this person. It's the same Sangheili that came to visit you with your cell. Warrior, you return. What news do you bring? The uh, Sangheili in gold armor sort of looks at you once but doesn't pay you very much mind. And he approaches Fireteam Dervish and Reiko. And he <coughs> stands, you think, at attention? Those of you who are human, those of you who are experienced Covenant soldiers know that this is. He's essentially preparing to give you a mission briefing. This thing healing. He takes out a device which is circular, it's <coughs> shiny. He chucks it on the floor between, in the space between <coughs> him and the rest of you. He stands about five, four meters away. And the device uh, beeps very loudly, chimes, and projects a hologram in the air in front of you. And this Sangheili begins to speak. I am Fleet Master Garvir Narvaidai. He waits you any response. <laughs> I'm sure. Gives a nod in greeting. Good to hear from you. Well met, Fleet Master. I'm just rolling this knife that I got given. Vidai sort of looks around and doesn't seem to react, but gives Reiko and Arsharam a bit of a nod. The hologram, which had been just projecting a pale, weird light, then shifts and it changes although i don't appear to hmm. hang on a minute huh well never mind it shows the image of a ship the rest of you see something that looks somewhat similar to a CCS-class battlecruiser, but not quite. Those of you, I think, Reiko and Arsharam, you would recognize it as a RCS-class armored cruiser. Zapata, you aren't there. You're off doing something else. Although, tell us what you're doing, actually. Well, actually, I'm on the other end of the hangar, just standing off in a corner, just looking around, because that's what me and my bond brother Karuta used to do, commonly. Okay. Just observe the species of the Covenant and the humans walking around, working, and not really speaking. Mm. Sad boy hours. <laughs> In any case, those of you who are with the fleet master as he's beginning to give this presentation, you see a hologram of this ship. The learned among you know it to be a RCS-class armoured cruiser, and the rest of you think it's a CCS-class battle cruiser. Mike, you have no idea what the hell you're looking at. It's a ship. Yay. Yeah. Many of my brothers were posted to such vessels. Mm. The fleet master sort of stares at you for a good half second at that before moving on. And he gestures at the hologram and says, This is the vessel known as the Obstinate Broodmare. And upon hearing no reaction to that, he begins to elaborate. The fleet of retribution around High Charity as it fell, when it was cut in half, this vessel, the Broodmare, cut ties with the rest of the Loyalist fleet. 
We attempted to intercept it as we heard transmissions referring to a figure aboard this ship known as... The... He sort of pauses and he works his mandibles as though chewing over his words. There were intercepted communications referring to a so-called eminent caretaker aboard this ship. And because we assumed this to be important, we attempted to destroy it. And in the process, two enemy frigates sacrificed themselves to ensure the safety of this vessel and what weapons fire we managed to levy against it were deflected by unusually advanced shielding. <clears throat> Could this not be a member of a refugee flotilla? I myself was captured by your marines aboard a similar vessel. The Vidai sort of... He's about to respond to you, but then thinks on it a bit. And he flexes his mandibles and says, We do not know. All we know is that the Loyalist fleet was very, very focused on making certain that this vessel in particular, he points to the hologram again, survived and fled the site of Delta Halo. It was here at Earth for... Mm, we do not know how long... And, well, he sort of pauses and stares at the floor. You're very, none of you are certain what to think of this man. This thing, in your case, Mike. Yeah, at this point, <laughs> Mike, is Mike is looking for the nearest hangar, like, that opens up to look out at space. Because he doesn't even understand what the, none of the terms are familiar with him. Nothing is familiar at this point, so... Yeah, no. Yeah, it's just a thing where he's just about to walk away because, like, they're As... talking pure Portuguese at this point to him. As you're sitting there, <laughs> as you're sitting there, just sort of looking around boredly, staring down the length of the hangar toward the one exit, you see one of the buildings in the far distance get up and move. That is still. Not even in the top five of the weirdest shit I've seen today. Mm. In any case, the fleet master picks up again and says, All we know is that the enemy were very focused on making certain that this vessel escaped Delta Halo intact, and that there is a figure aboard named the Eminent Caretaker. We do not know who this is. We assume it is a prophet. At this, Rico's eyes widen, and his mandibles almost become a smile <laughs> at hearing those Arshram. words. Arshram, too, is confused. He has seen many of the hierarchs and lesser prophets in his time, but this is not one he has ever heard of. And though the ship fits all classifications of a refugee vessel, the fact that it would come to Earth means that it was either commandeered or trying to disguise its purpose. Yes, Arshram, you are very confused. Eminent caretaker is not a title you've ever heard before. And yes, this is very confusing. The fleet master elaborates and says, This vessel went to Earth alongside the Dreadnought, the Anodyne Spirit. And in fact, based on the intercepted communications around the Loyalist fleet, it was a vessel that the liar, truth, was very, very adamant would accompany his ship. And, uh... Hmm. He then sort of paces back and forth as he speaks to you and says, this ship has almost certainly gone through the portal already and is at the Ark with the rest of Truth's fleet. We, as in you, your squad here, your mission 
is to find this ship and capture whoever or whatever the eminent caretaker is and bring them back to the shadow of intent. Alive or dead. The fleet master, he looks at you, Hunter, and despite yourself, you feel your guts tighten. You, he, hadn't, he hasn't looked directly at you yet, but when he does, you feel this... It's like the adrenaline you usually feel in the heat of combat, but mixed with the slightest amount of fear, you don't understand why this Sangheili makes you feel this way. And he looks at you for a very long moment and says, Alive at all costs. Clenches his hands and fists and says, Immediately, Arshram re relaxes. He Rigo does not look amused at this. Rigo is not happy that this target is required alive. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Vidai sort of gives you a, a sidelong look and sort of points a finger at you. As though he, it's as though he reads your mind, and which freaks you out. But the message is clear: bring them alive, okay. and you know. It's very reluctant. Understood. What were you saying, uh, Mushu? I was saying that Ashram is extremely relieved by the declaration. He had expected a kill order to be issued in the zeal of the fleet, for when he was captured. There were frigates and all other ships burning across the void in the blockade of High Charity, and even the fleeing civilian vessels were being fired upon. Well, so you go to a ship, find the eminent asshole, and bring him back alive, okay? I'm not qualified for non-humans. The, the fleet master looks at you, Kevin, and you too, feel your guts sort of it it's like a goat ghost has reached in and just squeezed your intestines that's the sensation you get when this guy looks at you and he's he says irrelevant we must capture this figure alive again we do not know who or what it is or even what its name means all we know is that the liar himself insisted that this ship and the figure on it second. go with him to Earth. What's As such, we do not know what we will get from this. What's we do that? not know what will be done when this figure is captured. All we know is that the UNSC wants some sort of leverage in case we cannot stop the liar truth at the Ark. Okay, uh, I need to take a quick AFK. Be right back. I'm going to leave the ah. recording. Mm -hmm. Hunter now feels a little less disappointed about not getting the chance to kill a prophet, but okay. understands the necessity of leverage just in case. Though he kind of views it as pointless, seeing as he believes that Truth probably doesn't give a shit about his fellow prophets. Now, on the other hand, Ashram feels the reverse. Truth is a compassionate being and will, de and will almost certainly abort plans should one of his precious subordinates be captured. But at the same time, he feels the first stirrings of fear, for he does not know if the captured prophet will be handed over to a kangaroo court barbaric execution he's not going to let it happen if he can help it as though detecting your thoughts Arshalam the fleet master gives you a look and you can't quite decipher it it's as though hmm hang on a minute You have no idea what that look means, but 
it almost seems like pity, but you can't be certain. In any case, the fleet master steps forward, retrieves the hologram projector he'd thrown on the ground, and says to you, The ship will exit slip space in approximately 11 days. We do not know what will be waiting for us on the other side of the portal. But whatever happens, you and whomever else volunteers for this mission, when the time comes, will board a lich and will go down to wherever we detect the obstinate broodmare to be. Understood? Affirmative. Understood, Fleet Master. Rico mutters, but ultimately says, understood, sir. Just yeah. another day. <laughs> the Sangheili uh, looks around to all of you once more and appears satisfied. Turns heel and leaves, walks away. And you are all left wondering what's going to happen. Where will the obstinate oh, broodmare be when... Let us meditate together. Hunter fucking leaves the hangar. He, he's gonna go. <laughs> he's gonna go for maintenance on his armor and weapons. He's leaving. You or, else he's gonna hit... <laughs> or else he's gonna hit that prophet that wanna be in the face. <laughs> ah, well and that's where we're going to end the session ah. a natural break point fun indeed oh very fun <laughs> uh. that's it that's the end of the story <laughs> well, that's it that's the end of the story look forward to our joint training sessions Everybody knows. I need to talk more. <laughs> you did fine. You gotta, you gotta stroke that talking boner, buddy. <sighs> Strider, I will murder you. <laughs> no, you fucking won't, bitch. Yep, that's session one of Installation 00. And I don't know when the next session will be, but I'll let you know when that happens. Woo! You're all ready to go. Unless oh, you know. We gotta wait till the boss comes back so we can do an outro. Ah, yes. Fair enough. We all need to be here for it. We gotta make it as we gotta make it as stupid as possible. No. Yes. Okay, uh, so come back. All right. Let's always hum the Halo theme together. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 no, no, yeah, it's just, well, You know, my guy just kind of zoned out, and now everybody's humming. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. We got we to do an outro. This is, we're doing an outro now, boss. We got to do the session's over. We got to do. We gotta okay, do an put outro. the bot on. Put the, get, get a bot. Yeah. yeah, no. We no. have to take the target alive. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. <laughs> Just put the bot on this boss. You don't have to do very much. Hopefully. Hey, that was good. Do an outro if you're still recording. What's up? The session's over. You can oh, do an outro shit. if you're recording. Yeah, sorry. Oh, well, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were no, giving this, is Arcos. this is Arcos. Everyone, uh, say goodbye. We're done for the night. Bye. 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 Bye.